Greetings everyone. This is Sean Van Deveen back with another astrology video. I'm so glad that you could join me. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who takes the time to watch my content and subscribe to my channel. It means so much to me and I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. So I'm going to talk about a planetary transit that is long in duration and one that's presently taking place at the time of this recording. It's the placement of Pluto in Capricorn, one which has been in effect since 2008 and will make its complete exit in 2024. Pluto will enter Aquarius briefly for four months, beginning in March of 2023, then will retrograde back into Capricorn in June, then will go direct once again and re-enter Aquarius in January of 2024. Because of its slow elliptical movement, Pluto remains in one single zodiac sign for many years. Its effects are therefore generational, affecting global trends and events more so than at an individual level. So let's get into the details of how the latest Pluto and Capricorn transit has made an impact on humanity. Well, first we need to understand what the planet Pluto and the zodiac sign of Capricorn in astrology symbolize. You see, Pluto is the planet of destruction, transformation, rebirth, regeneration, and death. Well, Capricorn is associated with government, conservatism, stability, and worldly ambition. Due to the length of this transit, I must speak about this in larger context by using major examples taken place since 2008 as examples. So I'll list them in point form for you. Okay, so all the way back in 2008, we had the collapse of Enron and the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy. I remember that very well. Uh, the global financial crisis, uh, or also the uh, global uh, recession, the Great Recession, I remember that. And Barack Obama becomes the first African-American to be elected uh, president of the United States. And in 2009, we uh, have uh, Greenland gaining uh, self-rule. And uh, the Treaty of Lisbon comes in, coming into force. In uh, 2010, uh, we have the release of the iPad from Apple, we have the Greek the Greek debt crisis, and uh, also the launch of Instagram. In 2011, we have the independence of South Sudan, the beginning of the Syrian civil war and uh, the overthrow of Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. And uh, we also have the uh, Occupy Wall Street protests. In 2012, we have uh, Encyclopedia Britannica discontinuing printed editions after 246 years and the end of the Mayan calendar on December 21st, and uh, Washington State becoming the first uh, jurisdiction in the world to legalize uh, cannabis for personal use. In 2013, we have uh, Benedict XVI to be the first Pope to voluntarily resign since uh, Celestine V in 1294. Uh, we have first production of human embryonic stem cells by cloning. In 2014, we have the uh, Russian annexation of Crimea, leading to suspension of G8 status and voting rights in Europe. The uh, independence of Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics and uh, Scotland voting against independence from the United Kingdom. And in 2015, we have uh, the Eurasian Economic Union forming, the uh, first 
space probe visiting a dwarf planet and Cuba and the United States resuming full diplomatic relations, as well as the launch of SpaceX, the first reusable rocket. And in 2016, we have uh, Donald Trump elected uh, U.S. president. In uh, 2017, we have uh, Brexit negotiations taking place. Uh, we have the United States leaving UNESCO and uh, Paris Climate, the Paris Climate Agreement. In uh, 2018, we have the first meeting between a U.S. president, uh, Donald Trump, and uh, North Korean leader, uh, Kim Jong-un. And uh, Canada is the first industrialized country to legalize cannabis. And uh, Apple Incorporated becomes the first corporation with uh, $1 trillion in value. And in 2019, we have uh, the United States and Russia leaving the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. We have uh, the first ever image of a black hole and uh, Emperor Ak Akihito of Japan abdicating the first Japanese emperor to do so in almost two centuries and uh, we have the uh, protests in uh, Hong Kong and uh, in 2020 um, we have the start of the COVID-19 pandemic um, so many government restrictions uh, were placed upon billions of people and uh, unfortunately million, millions of lives were lost and that in turn led to lockdowns leading to uh, start, stock market crashes and uh, in 2021 we have the uh, January 6th insurrection uh, on the United States Congress and uh, the largest vaccination campaign in the world goes underway to eradicate COVID-19 and uh, El Salvador becoming the first country to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender and uh, the Taliban reclaiming rule over Afghanistan. And uh, in 2022, uh, of course, we have uh, Russia invading Ukraine and uh, the death of uh, Her Majesty Queen, Queen Elizabeth II the longest reigning British monarch who ruled for 70 years with uh, King Charles III coming to the throne. And uh, yes, all of my uh, tidbits there, my source uh, was uh, en.wikipedia.org. So as you can imagine, a lot of transformations happen while Pluto is in the sign of the goat. Government and the rule of law is thrown into turmoil and more radical political forces attempt to influence the everyday issues of society. We see the rise of the plutocrats, the autocratic strongmen like Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, challenging the stability of democracy and world order. On an individual level, one born with Pluto in Capricorn is a power seeker with worldly ambition. They are able to initiate powerful change in go government organizations and corporations. They will fight against any opponents oppressing the members within an institution and make the necessary reforms once they've achieved their objectives. The most notable examples on the collective level since 2008, in my opinion, are the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, which triggered massive layoffs in the corporate world, the January 6, 2021 insurrection of the United States Congress, and in Canada, the freedom convoy of protesting truck drivers demanding an end to COVID-19 restrictions. While momentum mounts against governments curtailing civil rights and liberties around the world, more of us will rise up and de demand our freedoms back, setting the stage for what will happen while Pluto enters Aquarius. Pluto in Capricorn has undoubtedly ushered in major shakeups to the status quo for the ruling elite. The, overall, the overthrow of Gaddafi in Libya, the Syrian civil war, 
and the deep divide dominating contemporary America. National monetary currencies are now competing against cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. The great autocratic leaders such as Vladimir Putin with his invasion of Ukraine are making their last desperate stand to remain in power. It will not be much longer before humanity re reaches a new level of awakening and understanding that liberty and freedom will be the central focus. I believe when Pluto, Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn in June of 2023, more and more government corruption will be revealed thanks to social media and a course of worldwide freedom will begin to be composed. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn in the late 18th century, the American Revolution started, a war in which the colonies fought against the tyranny of the British crown. We could maybe see that in Russia and even in some Arab countries where Islamic law reigns supreme. So this has been my take on Pluto in Capricorn. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Be safe and be kind to one another. And I'll close by saying peace, much love, and namaste. God bless you and be strong. Take care.